Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Polymer Industry Part 2. First we have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous lecture of this particular chapter on polymer industries. We started discussion on the basics of polymers with the definition and classification. Polymers are made up of repeated basic units produced from monomers. These monomers can be of same molecule or uh, from the different molecules as well. If these are uh, from the different molecules then we call them what co-monomers and then whatever the polymer form uh, we call them copolymers. Okay? The purpose of polymers uh, production is that they should able to you know uh, fulfill some kind of engineering material uh, requirements. For that purpose only uh, such kind of polymers were developed. Uh, with the primary aim to have a very unique uh, physical or very different uh, physical and chemical properties compared to the base monomers etc. Right? So, in other words if you want to make a comparison or a competition with the existing conventional material they should able to replace the existing uh, material something like wood and uh, metal uh, you know and then uh, you can do the required engineering processing. Right? Such kind of uh, uh, requirements are expected to be fulfilled by polymers. Okay? And then we started discussions on the classification of polymers and then we realized that polymers, production of methods of polymers and then reactions, then polymers uh, type of materials produced, uh, you know so many interacting features are there amongst different types of uh, you know polymers. Because of that one classification of polymers uh, is very difficult. However, uh, four different uh, uh, broad ways one can commonly uh, classify the polymers. The first one is the physico-chemical structure. So, uh, based on the physico-chemical structure if you wanted to classify again based on the functionality whether the monomer is uh, bifunctional or trifunctional or polyfunctional accordingly you know polymers you know may be uh, produced and then based on the structures you can uh, uh, see based on the physical structure you can have the linear polymers, uh, cross linked polymers, branch chain polymers etc. Then based on the reaction methods also how or what kind of reactions are involved to get the uh, so called uh, you know polymers. So based on that one also you can uh, do a classification something like mode of preparation if you see like you know whether the condensation or addition kind of reaction going on. So accordingly we call or we uh, produce different types of uh, condensation polymers or addition polymers etc. So other way of category or classification of uh, polymers is based on the physical properties. So when you consider the physical properties for a classifications of polymers you should see physical properties like optical, thermal, mechanical, electrical, solvent properties along with the chemical resistance. And then under uh, this uh, physical properties category you can have thermoplastics that means you can uh, melt them, remelt them again as per the requirements and then mold them as per the requirements of the consumers that is possible. Then thermo settings once the cross linking has been done that cannot be remelted such kind of materials are thermo settings. Then elastomers something like you know rubbers etc. And then fibers, uh, most of the fibers um, are also classified based on the you know uh, physical properties. Then based on the technical applications also you can classify the polymers where you can have adhesives, coatings and films, fibers and solid shapes different types of uh, classifications are possible. These are common but you know not uh, exactly the way to do the classification but one uh, certain kind of basis these properties provide or this uh, grouping provides certain kind of basis to do a uh, possible classification of the polymers. Then after that we discussed the polymer manufacturing processes where we had uh, plastics, elastomers, polymer oils and fibers are four categories. Under the plastic, ethnic polymers and then condensation polymers are the two types. Elastomers, uh, most of the rubbers comes under the elastomers and then most of the silicons or uh, oils will come uh, under the polymer oils and then most of the fibers like thread etc. Uh, would, would be counted under the fibers. Right? 
under the ethnic, ethnic is uh, stands for the ethylene, it is derived not stand for ethylene, it is derived from the ethylene. Ethnic is derived from the ethylene because uh, most of the uh, polymers which are produced under ethnic category they may be having double bonds and triple bonds and then such kind of you know uh, monomers undergo some kind of addition reaction to produce polymers, something like ethylene. Uh, monomer used to produce polyethylene something like that. Under the polycondensation reactions you know uh, sm when the reaction uh, goes on some kind of small molecules like water, ammonia, formaldehyde etc. are uh, released to form polymers. Okay? So, uh, these two types of uh, polymers are you know different types of polymers falling under this category, these two categories would be discussed uh, or being discussed in the present chapter in which already we have completed uh, polyethylene and polypropylene manufacturing under the ethnic polymer processes. Now we see PVC, uh, ABS, uh, etc. these kind of polymers production under the ethnic category. After that we uh, uh, go into the phenol formaldehyde resins, polyurethanes, and then epoxies, etc., polymers under the polycondensation processes. Okay? So, these things we are going to cover now in today's lecture. So, let us start with PVC. PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride, and then it is one of the most uh, important or you know having large number of applications in the commodity market. So, we start discussions on the polyvinyl chloride and their copolymers. PVC is the most widely used commodity plastic in India. Copolymers in the sense you know um, we will see with uh, structures you know not only the vinyl chloride monomer but also some other monomers may also be joining together to form the copolymers of uh, you know polyvinyl chloride category. So, the purpose of copolymerization is to enhance certain kind of properties. Let us say if you take PVC, PVC is not soluble in most of the solvents. Let us say if you wanted to improve the solubility of the PVC then what you can do, you can have uh, some other co uh, monomer and then uh, prepare uh, copolymers. Uh, and then similarly PVC is also uh, weak in the thermal resistance. So, if you wanted to improve the thermal resistance what you can do, you can have some additional monomers as co monomers and then make a modified uh, polyvinyl chloride or polyvinyl chloride copolymers so that thermal resistance may also improve. So, basically the purpose of adding co-monomers is to improve one or other properties of the conventional polymer which is a single monomer, single type of monomer. Right? PVC is a versatile plastic because of its resistance to chemicals and self extinguishing and electrical properties. It is used both in consumer and industrial products. It is used to make uh, most of the pipes that we see uh, in the household and in industry, uh, most of them are PVC pipes, pipe fittings, wire cables, leather cloths, sheets and films, footwear and miscellaneous, so many other types of products one can produce from the PVC or PVC copolymers. Basic chemistry, we start with uh, uh, you know producing the linear polymer using the vinyl chloride uh, uh, monomer. So, this is based on the addition type kinetics where let us say you have uh, n number of moles of uh, vinyl chloride monomer. So, it will undergo addition polymerization to produce a polymer having this kind of repeating structure CH2, CH, Cl n number of times and then this n number of times it depends you know that will decide the final molecular weight and then other important properties associated properties of the polymer. Okay? Then vinyl copolymers if you wanted to produce rather simply polyvinyl chloride, vinyl copolymer if you wanted to produce, so there would be some other uh, co-monomer also be present. For example, let us say m moles of a vinyl chloride monomer and n moles of a this particular monomer here. In general in chemistry X stands for the uh, you know halogens or halides, but it is not true here it is it can be some kind of functional group like you know it can be COOH carboxyl, it can be COOH hydroxyl, it can be COOR these kind of things it may be having structures. If you have the CH2, CH, COOH then polyvinyl acetate you may get. 
if you have a CH2, CH, OH, then polyvinyl alcohol you may get. Like that, you know, methyl metacrylates you can get if X is COOR. So, now when these types of uh, different monomers reacting together and going through addition polymerization process, then you can have a polymer with a repeating structure of uh, this type of monomer. Now, here you have Cl, here you are having X and then m plus n number of times it is being repeated usually m is greater than the n ok. X is a group on the co-monomer such as uh, if it is carboxyl then you can expect vinyl acetate, if it is hydroxyl you can expect uh, vinyl alcohol, if it is carboxy ester then uh, you may expect methyl metacrylate polymers, if it is nitrile so acrylonitriles you can produce. Replacing HX group by chlorine atoms gives the vinylidin uh, monomer. It is not vinyl, it is vinylidin monomer. Okay. Pertinent properties PVC softening point is 80 to 140 degrees centigrade and it increases with the degree of uh, after chlorination and then after uh, 140 degrees centigrade it immediately or uh, rapidly decomposes liberating HCl. However, it can be stabilized at lower temperature with acid neutralizers such as alkali metal salts and then normal PVC is hard tough polymer however insoluble in most solvents. So, if you wanted to have the uh, improved solubility so then you can uh, try to make a vinyl copolymer rather simply making uh, vinyl chloride polymers. Okay. So, likewise uh, you know it can be softened by plasticizers for mechanical working. So, modifications can be done as per the properties uh, you know final properties that you require. Vinyl chloride copolymers are formulated to overcome some of the disadvantages of PVC. PVC let us say low solvent solubility we know. So, and then another, another one is that also poor thermal stability. So, in order to improve the thermal stability or in order to improve the solubility in solvents, you can do or you can add different types of uh, co-monomers and then prepare vinyl copolymers and then you get desired properties in your final you know uh, polymer that you are producing from the uh, vinyl chloride plus other kind of monomers, co-monomers. Consumption pattern. PVC with only small concentrations of plasticizers is designated as rigid very hard kind of structure you can get by adding only small concentrations of the plasticizers. So, and extruded in a heavy structural design such as pipe and sheets. When heavily plasticized it can be used for many elastomer type products ok, for that purpose also it is used. Copolymers greatly extend the uses for vinyl copolymers particularly when solvent solubility is desirable. Typical uses like you know latex emulsion and spray coatings, electrical insulations, textile fabric coatings, tubings, cloth line, rain water and shower curtains etc. for that purpose copolymers mostly used. This multiplicity of uses led the vinyl polymer group second in annual production just after polyolefins, after polyethylene, polypropylene etc. This is the most produced polymer okay? because of so many varieties of applications it is having as mentioned above. Coming to the production process, it is very simple process. Here let us say 100, 100 parts of water, 100 parts of uh, vinyl monomer and then one part of the catalyst and then 1.5 parts of the detergents are taken to a continuous polymerizer or continuous reactor. It can be batch reactor also. Let us say if you have a continuous reaction uh, reactor. So, the temperature of the reaction is uh, something around 50 degrees centigrade and then reaction uh, time duration is 72 hours. Such a long duration is there that is the reason mostly it is preferred to be carried out in a batch reactor though it, it can be done in the continuous process as well. Right. So, after the reaction whatever the reaction mixture is there that is passed through flash drum to recover the unreacted monomer and then recycle them whereas the uh, slurry wet polymer is there that is coagulated by using the acid coagulation 
in which water is being separated out. Then whatever the wet polymer is there that can be dried and then converted into the shapes of uh, requirement of the you know consumer whether they want pipes or connections etc. based on that one this final solid shape should be depending. right? Other alternative is that you do not need to go for the acid coagulation whatever the slurry after removing the monomers uh, from the flash drum is there that slurry directly taken to a spray dryer to which hot air is being uh, supplied so that the drying of the wet polymer taking place and then solid polymer dried solid polymer you can get and then that dry polymer you can convert as per the you know final product shape whatever you want. Okay? So, most of the polymer uh, methods production methods are uh, straightforward like that. Let us say in the next uh, ABS we are not going to discuss with the flow chart because there also addition of uh, you know uh, monomers along with the catalyst and fillers etc. and then doing the reaction after the reaction separating out the unreacted monomers and then whatever the wet polymer is there that is being dried out that is the simple process uh, followed for the most of the you know polymers. So, that is the reason in some of the upcoming uh, polymers production processes we may not be having the flow chart anyway. Okay? So, however, uh, if you see the detailed text of this particular process, then we have emulsion and suspension polymerization methods are used commercially. The latter is used only if high purity polymers are desired. In general, emulsion polymerization is used, but however, if you want uh, high purity polymer production, then suspension polymerization method is used to produce either uh, polyvinyl chloride or vinyl copolymers. Okay? Let us say in emulsion polymerization uh, what you do? You take uh, a typical formulation let us say uh, in this case you know 100 parts of water, 100 parts of vinyl monomers, uh, 1 part of the per sulphate catalyst and then 1.5 parts of the detergent emulsified. Detergents are used uh, are included because of uh, emulsification if you wanted to do the uh, emulsion polymerization. So, emulsification is required for that purpose this detergent is being added to the reactant mixtures and then taken to the reactor where the desired polymerization reaction is taking place. This is fed to a pressure reactor either continuous or uh, batch either way it is possible operating at approximately 50 degrees centigrade but however for periods as long as 72 hours and then it may be less also it may be sometimes higher also that depends on the final polymer quality and then physical properties, purity etc. all those parameters comes into the picture. Micellular polymer particles can be further stabilized by addition of more emulsifying agent and solid as vinyl latex. If solid polymer is desired the mixture is either acid coagulated and dried or directly spray dried. That is that is all about uh, polyvinyl chloride uh, polymers or vinyl copolymers production and then consumption pattern etc. Now, we discuss about the uh, ABS resins. Here ABS stands for A stands for acrylonitrile monomer, B stands for butadiene monomer, S stands for the styrene monomer. So, different types of monomers are uh, being added and then uh, coupled to produce a uh, resin kind of polymer. So, that is the reason this polymer is known as the copolymer. Okay? So, in general what you do? You take a butadiene, polybutadiene and then mix it with acrylonitrile and styrene and then do the you know reactions as per the uh, flow chart as just we have seen for the case of uh, PVC kind of uh, flow chart. When the reaction is completed taking the reaction mixture and then separating out the you know unreacted monomers mostly it is done by the flash drums then whatever the wet uh, resin is there that you can dry and then process as per your requirement. Coming to the ABS resins uh, uh, grades over 100 grades are internationally available though in India roughly 10 grades are available in the markets. It is also known as engineering plastic because it is used in various industries like uh, refrigerator liners, automobile components, molded and therm thermoformed parts of telephone, intercoms, mixers, computer cabinets, cameras, 
vacuum cleaners, molded luggage, toys, etc. So many types of you know products or industrial products are also being produced. That's the reason it is known as the engineering plastic. Okay. Preparation process: raw materials for manufacture of uh, ABS resins are obviously acrylonitrile, butadiene, and then styrene copolymers. A monomer soluble polybutadiene rubber, which should be soluble actually, or butadiene copolymer is dissolved in styrene and acrylonitrile monomers along with the initiators and modifiers, and then carry out the reaction. Uh, and then after the reaction, whatever the reaction mixture is there that you pass through a flash drum to separate out the unreacted uh, monomers and then recycle them back whereas the wet polymer you can do the subsequent processing. This mixture is polymerized through phase conversion. Several types of uh, bulk polymerization may be used interchangeably for high impact ABS as well not only the phase conversion. Okay? Advantages of ABS resins as compared to other substitutes like metals, ABS resins have several advantages since it is light in weight, easy to process and lower maintenance. Okay? Current demand for ABS resins is expected to increase as a result of uh, growth in user industries such as automobiles and telecommunications. So, with that we uh, complete ethnic polymer processes under which uh, we have discussed the production of polyethylene, polypropylene, PVC and then vinyl copolymers and ABS resins. Now we talk about the next type of uh, plastics production or polymer production that is polycondensation processes. Okay? Polycondensation has been defined as step wise reactions of monomers with functional grouping. In, in this process in general what happens small molecules like water, ammonia, formaldehyde, sodium chloride etc. are being released and then by this uh, polycondensation process you can produce linear polymers as well as cross linked tridimensional or three dimensional polymers as well you can make. Okay? However, mostly polycondensation process is used for uh, producing cross linked uh, tridimensional polymers. Okay. Under polycondensation processes different types of uh, you know polymers can be produced like you know phenol formaldehyde is one type, then urea formaldehyde other type, then uh, uh, polyurethanes, epoxy resins etc. you can produce using polycondensation process. However, first we discuss phenol formaldehyde resins then after that epoxies and then polyurethanes we discuss. Polyformaldehyde resins first you know methylol monomer formulation or formation is important. Here what happens phenol and then formaldehyde are reacting phenol and formaldehyde reacting to produce methylol monomer like this. Now if x is 2 then you have only this uh, uh, this mono, this functional and this functional. So, bifunctional you have. So, if x is equals to 2, it is bifunctional. If x is equals to 3, then you have this uh, functional also would be there. So, it is a trifunctional. Okay? So, if you wanted to produce uh, you know linear polymers, then usually you take a bifunctional monomer that is a dimethylol phenol monomer. If you wanted to produce a tridimensional cross-linked thermosetting or thermoplastic then uh, you take a trifunctional monomer that is trimethylol phenol monomer you should take as a base material. Okay? So, let us say linear polymer if you wanted to produce m number of monomers of uh, this particular component that is dimethylol phenol monomer you take and then you do the polycondensation reaction. So, then uh, polymer or resin having this particular repeating unit uh, would be produced and then m by 2 number of units would be you know uh, being repeated like that. Okay? So, the, this is for the linear polymer. Substitution of non-functional group in the fourth position, this is the fourth position if you have then block that will lead to uh, you know seizing the cross linking possibilities. Okay? 
So, if you wanted to produce cross linked tri dimensional polymer, then what you do? You take uh, n number of moles of uh, trimethylol phenol monomer and do the polymerization. So, water spitting would take place or releasing of water takes place, and then these kind of structures are different types of you know uh, structures, cross linked structures, polymers you can produce. These are the representative structures only, ok. That is the reason, etc., has been written here, ok. Fine. So, now here what happens in this reaction as well as in this reaction let us water is being removed and then that water can be dried up by heating and then vacuuming subsequently in the process. Pertinent properties based on the bifunctional or trifunctional which group you have taken wide variety forms of phenol formaldehyde polymers can be prepared. Thus, it is impossible to give specific properties of uh, these phenyl formaldehyde resins in general. However, general resin characteristics can be controlled by you know what type of catalyst are you using. So, whatever the phenyl formaldehyde polymers are formed, they are resin in the characteristics in general. You can use the acid solution catalyst or acid catalyst H2SO4, etc., you can use. And then when you use this acid catalyst with excess phenol, then you can produce linear soluble thermoplastics, thermoplastics if you wanted to produce that is a material which can be melted, remelted, uh, you know uh, molding anything that you can do as many number of times as you wish, the plastic behavior would be there. Such kind of uh, phenol formaldehyde resin if you pro want to produce then you should use acid solution catalyst. Remember this phenol formaldehyde resin you can have you know thermoplastic uh, form as well as the uh, thermo uh, setting type of uh, things uh, resin can also be produced. If you want to produce thermoplastic then you have to use the acid uh, catalyst uh, like H2SO4 you have to use. Okay? If you wanted to uh, produce thermo setting type of phenol formaldehyde resin then alkaline catalyst should be used and then it can be done in two stages, stage one stage process, two stage process. One stage process is simple, uh, correct or specified proportions of phenols and formaldehyde should be taken in the presence of correct amount of the uh, catalyst like NaOH etc. and then specified the temperature and time or control temperature of the reaction and time of the reaction very specifically to get the so called uh, PF resins of thermo setting nature. So, that is happening in one single step. So, this process is known as the one stage process. In the second stage process what happens whatever this thermoplastic that you got here, this thermoplastic would be mixed with uh, uh, hexamethyl ammonium kind of component which undergo decomposition to produce ammonia and then formaldehyde. This formaldehyde would be reacting with the uh, thermoplastic that is being produced by uh, acid solution catalyst and then uh, undergo polymerization in the presence of ammonia catalyst to produce thermo setting PF resin. So, here two stages are there that is the reason this process is two stage process. In one stage correct ratio of phenol to formaldehyde is reacted with proper control of time and heat to yield a thermo setting or heat reactive powders. This can be heated to an infusible insoluble state via further cross linking. Uh, this resins whatever you get they are high viscous uh, you know solutions, very high viscous like you know honey or even viscous liquids you get. If you if, if that uh, resin is thermo setting and then if you do not store it properly with uh, proper uh, additives or uh, diluents that will be undergoing some kind of cross linking on storing itself. So, uh, usually if you based on the shape what type of uh, form, shape or form of resin that you wanted to get for based on the application after the reaction processing is to be done accordingly. We will see that one in the flow chart anyway. Two stage process thermoplastic material form acid catalysis process and that is mixed with hexamethyl tetramine. This hexamethyl tetramine breaks down into the formaldehyde and ammonia during the reaction because of the reaction temperature right and then this formaldehyde would be combining with the thermoplastic resin that is formed uh, in this process right 
and then that formaldehyde reacting with the thermoplastic to form a thermosetting product with ammonia as catalyst. So, here the process is taking place uh, you know uh, in two uh, stages that is the reason it is known as the two stage process. Both one and two stage resins are used as commercial molding materials because of final cross linked polymer having good resistance to all chemicals except the alkyl alkalis. So, these are having so many applications. Third one is strictly linear polymer that you can get uh, with good heat fusion and solvent stability properties used for uh, varnishes and then uh, adhesives purposes. But however, here how you get this one simply replace the phenol with the cresol, then you can get the uh, linear polymers suitable for varnishes and adhesives. Okay. Consumption pattern, phenolic resins or phenol formaldehyde resins are also known as phenolic resins are low cost polymers with excellent physical and electrical properties and fast curing characteristics that is very important. However, they have very poor color, so their color can be improved by adding some kind of pigments, dyes and fillers. Usually they would be having you know under resin so high viscous resin form that would be having like you know uh, light brownish color as the uh, cross linking degree of cross linking increases the color becomes dark brown and then very dark brown and then once it is completely cross linked it, it uh, resembles like almost like a black color uh, uh, solid material. So, the uh, color can be uh, improved by pigments by adding pigments, dyes and fillers in general. Main uses fall into three classes. If you wanted to use like in coatings, varnishes and laminated structures, then what you do whatever the high viscous phenolic resins are there that you dissolve in appropriate solvent and then use for this application that is one type. If you wanted to use for the adhesives then what you do the same resin you dissolve in some water solutions and then use for the adhesive bonding purpose. If you wanted to use them uh, you know uh, for thermoset molded solid forms then completely do the cross linking, do the fusioning and then you get a uh, completely cross linked cured uh, solid uh, resin that you can use for this purpose. Okay. For a number of years phenolics ranked first in USA uh, because of their application however nowadays uh, you know thermoplastics are taken over. So, coming to the flowchart, a uh, simple process here what you do monomers, phenol, formaldehyde along with the catalyst. Let us say if you wanted to have a thermosetting then a NaOH catalyst should be used and then there should be some modifiers and then solvents also as per the requirement. They are taken to a uh, batch resin kettle and then reaction is allowed to undergo. For the reaction to undergo energy is required that is supplied through the uh, steam. In order to control the uh, energy of the reaction, uh, cooling water is supplied uh, along the surface of the outside surface of the reactor. Sometimes what happened you know total reflexing is done so that to control the temperature of the reactant mixtures as well. Right? After the completion of the reaction you know reaction temperature varies usually 70 to 130 degree centigrade depending on the catalyst and catalyst concentration etc. Right. So, this high viscous solution whatever you get that if you dissolve in appropriate solvents and then store it that can be used for the laminating resins and coatings purpose. If you dissolve in uh, water solutions then that the solution you can uh, use for the adhesives and coatings purpose. Otherwise this molten resin can be water cooled then uh, dried and then crushed and then screening has been done to take the particles of uh, 200 mesh as a final product others are sent back for the resizing purpose. And then after this point you know you can add different types of lubricants, fillers, plasticizers as per your requirement and then finally it passes through after adding the fillers, plasticizers and then lubricants as per requirement that mixture is passed through differential heating rolls which are nothing but the you know two rolls are there which are heated up as per the temperature required for the uh, 
uh, molding purpose and then between these uh, heated rolls the material passes through and then you get the desired structure that would be conveyed back and then you get uh, do the crushing etc to get the thermosetting molding powder. If you wanted to get a solid form so this is the this process you have to follow right. Otherwise you, you are doing this pro or producing phenolics for this application so you, you do not need to do the drying process all this process cross linking process is not required ok. Now process description polymerization is an exothermic reaction which must be controlled by batch reaction as the material rapidly changes viscosity. Phenol, formaldehyde and catalyst are mixed together in a jacketed autoclave or resin kettle and heated with the steam. After reaction starts, heat of reaction is removed by refluxing and water cooling. In the early stages of reaction, heavier viscous resin separates as a bottom layer with an aqueous layer at the top. This aqueous layer would be dried up because of the supplied the steam and then vacuum applied. Then fused resin at 130 to 150 degree centigrade is removed from the kettle, cooled, ground to fine powder. Heat reactive molding powder prepared above can be mixed with fillers, coloring agents, lubricants, catalyst in a ribbon blender or ball mill. It is then heated further on a pair of differential heating rolls to prepare fast curing commercial phenolic molding powders. So that is all about phenol formaldehyde polymers prepared by polycondensation process. Now the same polycondensation process would be applied uh, to produce epoxy resins, right. So let us start discussion on epoxy polymers. Basic chemistry, different ways uh, it is possible and then even nowadays also more and more research is going on to produce different types of uh, you know epoxides. However, we take uh, four important ones which are commercially viable in India. The first one is the epoxidation which is nothing but the addition of an oxygen atom across the C double bond C to give a epoxy functional group like this, okay. Oxygen transfer agent can be per acid such as the parastic acid, hydrogen peroxide or chlorhydrin followed by HCl removal whereas the latter gives the epochlorhydrine that reaction we will see. This reaction we have already seen 2-3 times right you know one time we have seen like you know, uh, you know uh, when we are discussing about the natural uh, glycerol production then synthetic glycerol production right. So both the chapters we have seen this reaction. So uh, in that reaction we already realized that epichlorhydrine we get it as a you know kind of uh, intermediate okay. So up to that part only we are discussing after that getting glycerol part we are not discussing here anyway. So in the synthetic glycerol manufacturing what happens actually propylene reacts with the chlorine to get allyl chloride which further reacts with HOCl to give the allyl alcohol which undergoes uh, a reaction uh, or polycondensation reaction by removing the HCl where it forms epichlorhydrin of this particular structure, okay. This kind of structure you will be having in epoxies, okay. C, C, O are connected in a triangular form like this. So that is very common structure in epoxies. So this epichlorhydrin you get it here, okay. So other one is the epoxide polymers contain an epoxy group at the ends of a polymer. For example, reaction of epichlorhydrin whatever we have taken or produced just now that uh, reacts with uh, bisphenol A so that the condensation reaction undergoes with the loss of HCl then you get the epoxides. How? This is nothing but your bisphenol A. Right, this particular component it is obtained by condensation of a acetone and then phenol. So actually 2 moles of phenols reacts with the uh, acetone and then and it undergoes the condensation reaction. So where H2O is being released and then this particular uh, bisphenol A 
is forming. This bisphenol A would react with the epichlorhydrine and then this again undergo condensation reaction and then we know when, whenever there is a condensation reaction small molecules like water, ammonia, HCl, NaCl etc. are being released. So, here HCl is being released and, uh, and a polymer would be formed or epoxide should be formed in which whatever this within the black parenthesis uh, shown that structure is only repeating structure whereas this is not. Now, this, this component or this functional we call it epoxy. So, this is one method. Epichlorhydrins are also condensed with other hydroxyl groups in compounds such as resorcinol, hydroquinone, ethylene glycol and glycerol as well. So, third type of uh, epoxy monomers preparation if you see that can be obtained from unsaturated natural products such as vegetable oils, particularly soybean oil and tall oil from wood pulping. Molecular structure of polymers from epoxidized natural product monomers is extremely complex. Both linear and cross-linked polymers are possible. The fourth way of getting epoxy monomers is the synthetic way like you know obtained via butadiene cyclidation and peroxidation reaction. If you see the reaction, two moles of the butadiene undergo cyclidation reaction to produce vinyl cyclohexane. This vinyl cyclohexane reacts with the hydrogen peroxide or parastic acid to produce this epoxy monomer. Okay? Right. So, pertinent properties, epoxy resins exhibit extreme versatility because of possible combinations of properties such as chemical stability from ether linkages, then chemical reactivity from residual epoxy and hydroxyl groups, excellent addition to a variety of surfaces, good abrasion resistance, curing and molding without evaluation of gas with a low shrinkage outstanding electrical properties, ability to form copolymers with unusual properties, so and so, so many properties it can exhibit. Okay? Molecular structure, purity and residual saturation in the product are main criteria for the suitability in most of the applications. As per the applications, as per the properties that you are desiring in final epoxy resins, accordingly molecular structure and then corresponding purity and residual saturation one has to see. Okay? Consumption pattern, epoxy resins industry has one of the large potential growth. This is due to combination of low cost and abundant raw materials coupled with uh, continual uh, new processing developments and a greater variety of products. Their main uses in film forming, other use and as plasticizers for uh, vinyl polymers. Coming to the production methods, epoxy polymers are manufactured largely by batch processing because of uh, low tonnage, you produce in low tonnages and multiple formulation marketing as well as the reaction time is also very large. Increased demand of several epoxy resins has led to the developments of continuous processing using two or more mixing reactors in series. Epoxy polymer processes are relatively simple and use the solvent polymerization method. Unsaturates, epoxidizing agent and solvent are contacted on a programmed addition schedule for a given temperature and time conditions. Water or other condensables and solvents are removed and the solid or oil resin fraction is given a final purification and drying. Simple straightforward as we have seen other flow charts just now for other polymers like uh, PVC and then phenol formaldehyde kind of a reactors are suitable here. You can take a batch reactor or continuous reactor, mostly batch reactors are there. So, here epoxidizing agent and uh, uh, any unsaturated solvents etc., catalyst etc. are taken to the reactor, allowed to undergo the re polymerization reaction, whatever the water is there that is dried off by the heat or vacuum and then mixture whatever is there that you take to the flash drum to separate out the monomers and then recycle back, whereas the wet polymer you can take and then dry it, uh, purify it and dry it as per the requirements. 
unusual engineering design features are safety precautions in handling the peroxidizing components to avoid detonating conditions, exact temperature control with provisions for rapid dumping and water flushing for a runaway reaction is very essential to carefully design. So that is all about the uh, uh, epoxy resins, uh, their uh, basic chemistry, manufacturing process, applications, properties, etc. Now finally, we discuss about uh, polyurethanes and then we conclude this particular chapter. Polyurethanes, this is one another type of condensation polymer. Both thermosetting and thermoplastics can be produced by uh, this kind of uh, you know condensation polymer to get different types of poly. Uh, Urethanes, organic uh, isocyanate compounds have been known for long time, but first became commercially interesting in the last 2 to 3 decades based on the work of Bayer where it was shown that di and poly isocyanates with di and polyols formed polyurethanes with many uses. Considerable increase in production capacity for di isocyanate feedstock increased because of its use in production of polyurethanes which are used in automobile constructions, refrigeration technology, etc. Actually we are first talking about the raw materials. Raw materials are uh, di or poly isocyanates and then di or uh, polyols. So about the importance of uh, di isocyanates. Uh, we have seen here. Now about the other raw material, polyols. Polyols are used as main raw materials along with methylene diphenyl diisocyanate that is MDI uh, and R, toluene diisocyanate that is uh, TDI in manufacturing of polyurethane foams. These flexible rigid and rigid type of foams, they are rigid and flexible as well are only rigid as well, either of them you can produce. Uh, they have extensive applications in industrial insulation, refrigeration, manufacture of mattresses, furniture and automobile seats, footwear and then wood components uh, replacement, etc. Propylene glycol is used in pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, food flavors, tobacco processing and in manufacturing of unsaturated polyester resins for fiber reinforced plastics and many other applications. Now coming to the uh, raw material toluene diisocyanate which is important for from the polyurethane manufacturing point of view. It can be used in the uh, its isomers 2,4 and 2,6 isomers form, right. It is the most significant diisocyanate from the polyurethane manufacturing point. However, recently 4,4 diphenyl methane diisocyanate that is methane diphenyl diisocyanate nothing but MDI has overtaken TDI. Another important component of polyurethane is hexamethylene 1,6 diisocyanate which is HDI. TDI is generally manufactured in a continuous process involving three important steps. First one is the nitration of toluene to get the dinitrotoluene, then this dinitrotoluene would be undergoing hydrogenation to produce toluene diamine, then this uh, toluene diamine would be undergoing phosgenation reaction to produce TDI, toluene diisocyanate. If you see the manufacturing process of MDI, MDI is produced by reacting aniline with formaldehyde to get methylene bis aniline. This dianiline or nothing but diamine is reacted with phosgene to yield MDI. TDI methods or production method is already discussed here, the same thing is shown here again. Manufacturing process for uh, polyurethanes we see, the previous one is that uh, diisocyanates, TDI, MDI manufacturing we have seen because they are most important raw materials to produce uh, polyurethanes because this uh, TDI or MDI are reacting with the diols or polyols to produce polyurethanes. So how these polyurethanes are being produced from these uh, you know TDI, MDI and then polyols that we are going to see now. Thermoplastic polyurethanes are formed by linking three basic components as mentioned below. First one is a linear hydroxyl terminated polyol with molecular weight 500 to 
3500. Second one is a diisocyanate which may be aromatic such as MDA, TDA or non-aromatic such as dicyclohexylmethane diisocyanate. However, MDI is preferred in general and then third one is low molecular weight glycol such as 1,4-butanidiol ethylene glycol or 1,4-phenylene bis B hydroxyl ethyl ether to serve as chain extenders. By either of these three methods you can produce thermoplastic polyurethanes. References for today's lecture, in fact the references for the today's and then previous lecture on polymer industry are presented here. Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, fifth edition. Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology by Kirk and Atmar, fourth edition. And then Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Groggins, fifth edition. However, the entire uh, lecture notes of today's lecture as well as the previous lecture on polymer industry can be found from this reference book. With this, we complete our lectures on polymer industries as well. Thank you.